Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their advice. If you'd like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review as that will help others to learn about Autism Stories. It's just less than a month to go until STEMI Vibrations, a day to celebrate Autistic Voices on April 2nd. And I'm excited to announce a couple of new podcasts that that will be participating in the event from autistic folks living in Europe. The first is Neurodiversity Gold by Jude Morrow and Awesome Training by Eveline Welton. June will be venting about why April is the worst fucking month for autistics and how to survive. And Eveline will discuss the history of online autistic spaces and the future of these spaces. In order to participate for STEMI Vibrations, you must register, and a link to do so can be found in the podcast description of this episode. So please register today. Now on to today's episode of Autism Stories, in which I will have a talk with C.J. LaFontaine about creating the Autistic Book Master List, which is an extensive database dedicated to finding autistic authors and stories. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. C.J., thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I want to start off like I do with a lot of these episodes and learn where does your story in the autistic community begin? My story with the autistic community actually did not take place until I was in my 20s, really. I was diagnosed when I was 14, but I spent a long time kind of in denial because of the stigma and just all the perceptions I had of what that would mean for me. So I didn't start seeking out online communities until I was in my 20s and I was starting to feel a little bit like isolated and I wanted to kind of feel if other people had these experiences like I did and once I started getting on these forums, I started to become more involved in the autistic community. So you're an educator. What's it about education that made you want to say, I, I want or need to do this? Well, I originally started off on a career path to be a librarian, and that's still something I'm interested in and passionate about, but there is a lot of overlap between education and librarianship. I did a year as a tutor in AmeriCorps, and I went back to libraries for a little bit But this position that I'm in now opened up, and my technical job description is a support coordinator. So I do some tutoring, and I also kind of advocate for students that need extra support. So it really drew me in because I want to be able to help kids that are like me or not like me be able to have access to the education that they need. And it still allows me to kind of focus on my interests in reading and writing because I'm also tutoring children with their reading skills. Now, I know um, we have listeners who are interested in educating or supporting other autistic or neurodivergent folks. If someone want, want to kind of go into the a similar uh, field that you're in, do you have any advice for them? I think what helps can be just starting out with something small, like a small one-on-one tutoring gig or kind of getting your foot in the door at like a school or whatever environment you want to be working in. So you can kind of figure out your own threshold and what you can do there. I think what 
really got me more involved in it was like learning that it's not just like one path. You don't have to just be a teacher with a huge classroom of students. Like that was always something that seemed way too overwhelming to me. And I didn't realize there was really like a lot of other things I could do with that. So I think just like considering if one route is not the best one for you to just explore different ways you can be involved in that. Now, now you've done something, you, you created a project that I think is, is really cool. I'm so impressed by it. And it's an autistic book master list. It's, uh, you know, from what I've seen, it's the most comprehensive list of books relating to autism that I found, especially when you think about its focus on autistic authors. Why was it so important for you to create this master list? Well, at the time, I was still working at the library, and one of my things I wanted to do within my work there was to kind of elevate own voices, and I would do book displays, and I found when I was trying to search for these books, I wasn't finding a lot, like, within the library or a lot that was just visible online. So this kind of started out as a personal project for me to gather books for the library I was working at, and... It turned into a larger thing as I started to find more and more books and think about how this could help other librarians or educators or people that just want to see themselves in books. Now, you know, when something's created, I think the tendency is to look at the end product, and I certainly do that, but my mind also quickly switches to thinking about the process and all the effort that is involved in that. So I really, when I see a project like this, I'm really interested in the research aspect of all of this. Because like you, you said, um, it's not easy to find books and, you know, there'll be some lists online, but nothing to the extent of your list. So what was the research process for you in finding, from what I last checked, was 363 books on your, on your master list? Well, I happen to enjoy researching a lot if it's something that I'm interested in. I think that kind of tends to be true for a lot of us where we get that hyper focus and we can just spend hours and hours in this task. So that was kind of what it became to me where I had like 15 tabs open of like Goodreads lists and Adriana L. White is a librarian who is autistic and has her own book list and I reference those a lot and I kind of built off of a lot of what her work was and we have people like Ada Hoffman who review sci-fi books with autistic characters in them so I just kind of took to like multiple platforms asked around in groups saw like lists on Twitter and was just saving every little thing every little note until I could go and add more information onto it and I, I feel like in, in any process we go through, we're bound to discover surprising things along the way. Was there something that surprised you in kind of researching this list? Oh, absolutely. It surprised me how many things I could find once I was able to kind of organize them. I didn't expect to be able to find that many books, especially written by autistic folks themselves. It didn't seem like there would be a lot out there, and there really is a lot, especially when you dig into, like, there's a publisher called Jessica Kingsley Publishers, and they publish, like, exclusively neurodiverse subject matter, and I guess it also kind of surprised me to see, like, how specific some of the books were, some of the topics that they get into. Because a lot of what I had seen before were kind of like the basics, like what is autism, you know, and kind of seeing more specific research about like autism and addiction or like autism and police encounters, just these really specified studies that need to be talked about. It was a pleasant surprise to see that there are resources out there. You know, something that I say is that 
autistic people are everywhere and doing everything. Is that similar to what you found in this process? Yes, yes, definitely. Now, there are books on your master list uh, ranging for, it's for people of all ages throughout the lifespan, so many different subgenres ranging from general information to history to parenting to fantasy to science fiction, just to name a few of the categories. However, I wanted to learn about the books on your list from the LGBTQ plus category. Are there books on your list that you would say are particularly important for people to read if they want to know about the intersection of being autistic and LGBTQ? I will be honest that I definitely have not read all 300 something books on there, <laughs> but <laughs> there's a lot that are on my radar right now. And I know in particular that the author Yen Perkis and also Maxfield Sparrow have good materials about these intersections and they've been on my radar for a while to read. It's just actually getting myself to sit down and read them. And I think their books tend to be more nonfiction oriented. So like if you as an autistic LGBTQ person were looking for characters that you would see yourselves in drawing a blank. <laughs> I really like there was a teen novel that was called Queens of Geek and that was by Jen Wilde and it actually was kind of a split perspective. So the autistic character was not queer, but it was split between a bi girl who was pursuing a relationship with another girl and an autistic girl. And they're like, this whole thing revolves around this big convention and I thought it was just cute and relatable. There definitely seems like there's more and more books kind of that have characters that fall, that have both of the, those identities. Yes, it's, I definitely would like to see more because while you have all of the, the nonfiction books or the biographies, I feel like I would still like to see myself more in just fiction books that I'm reading for fun. So I think there's still a lot of work to be done there, but I can see that a lot of people are getting out and publishing more. And I think this pandemic in particular really got a lot of people in their own time finishing these novels. Just looking at the list, you can see so many came out in the last couple of years. So I have a lot of hope that we're going to have more books where people see themselves in more than one aspect. Now, something that I think about every day is executive functioning. And, mm -hmm. and especially in the context of this project, I know there must have been lots of executive functioning to get to the point of 363 books. You were kind of talking about the process somewhat. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a plan maybe about maintaining and growing the list because we only are going to be, you know, kind of to your point that you were just making, I think we're going to get more and more great books that should be included in such a master list. Well, when I first finished this project I was pretty burnt out and I kind of like stepped away from it for a little bit like I needed to stop staring at computer screens for a while but these days I've just kind of been keeping screenshots or little notes to myself when I see something on Twitter or on one of my Facebook groups about a new book coming out that's related to neurodiversity and I also have a little submit button on that blog where if people hear something that's coming out or something that's not on the list or like a correction, like it gives you a little form where you can send me an email. And not too many people have made use of that yet, but I still think it's a good option. So then that way, if someone knows something I don't, then I have more ways to stay in the loop. I think it's a great option, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bug you, and I'll submit some stuff. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. It's, I think it's just really hard for one human to maintain things like these. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's been the response of this project? Um, what type of feedback have you received from folks? To be honest, I had a hard time like making it visible at first. 
I was a little bit disappointed when I kind of posted it and the algorithm or whatever kind of just didn't seem to be showing it to a lot of people and it wasn't getting a lot of reblogs. But I have noticed it's picked up a little bit. And overall, people have been really excited about this as a resource, which just is really great to hear because I want people to be able to find these books. Absolutely. And hopefully this interview will bring a few more people, just just bring some awareness like this list exists. Yeah, I hope so. And, um, you know, how can people go about finding the Autistic Book Master List? So the main page for it, the website, is just autisticbooklist.wordpress.com. But I have it pinned on my Facebook page and my Twitter, which are the Autistic Alien. That's kind of my username. And on my blog itself, I kind of have these pinned up to the top so they're easy for people to find. And, and the Autistic Alien has quite a few fat followers. Last I looked, it was like, what, 11,000? Something like that? Yeah, that is very surprising to me. I think most of my followers come from, like, the memes I share more so than the, uh, <laughs> more so than the serious content. But I've noticed a lot of people have kind of stayed around and been willing to learn, whether it's like a parent or someone that is also autistic. Who doesn't love a good meme anyway? Right. <laughs> They're important. We need a sense of humor during these times. No doubt. Well, CJ, I really um, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for the conversation. Thank you. Thanks so much to CJ for the conversation. To learn more about the Autistic Book Master List, check out the link in the podcast description of this episode. Autism Personal Coach has been in existence for almost a decade now with the mission to help autistic adults and teens get their needs met and desires fulfilled. If you have an interest in learning more about how we can help you, then book a free call with me today to discuss working with Autism Personal Coach. A link for the free call can be found in the podcast description of this episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories, and if you did, if you could tell a friend, foe, or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable experience as you when listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. On the next episode of Autism Stories, we will discuss being autistic and working in the medical field. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.